Hello and welcome. Let's start with our top story. Since the start of the year, there's been a flurry of diplomacy to resolve escalating tensions over Ukraine. It has put Russia, the United States and its European allies in uncharted post-Cold War territory. Today, Blinken arrived in Kiev to meet the Ukrainian president and other leaders as the West fears what it calls a Russian invasion. In Ukraine, Blinken urged Russian President Vladimir Putin to choose the peaceful path. Uh, we know that there are plans in place to increase that force even more on very short notice. And that gives uh, President Putin the capacity, uh, also on very short notice, uh, to take further aggressive action uh, against Ukraine. And I strongly, strongly hope that we can keep this on a diplomatic and uh, peaceful path. But ultimately, that's going to be President Putin's decision. Ukrainian President Zelensky thanked the United States for help during what he called difficult times. He also stressed the importance of U.S. military aid, especially with the buildup of Russian troops on the border. This comes as Russia says the weapons deliveries are in fact what is raising tensions around Ukraine. The thing that you need is another visitor. Uh, because I think uh, Kiev may be the This support not only speaks to our strategic plans of Ukraine joining the alliance, but more importantly to the level of our military, our military supplies. Yes, we allocate the largest amounts for the military budget since gaining independence, but we still understand that if we want dramatically fast steps in modernizing the military, we need help, especially in these tough times. Blinken's trip will also take him to Berlin for meetings with European allies. A four-way talks with Britain, France and Germany. Then he will head to Geneva for a meeting with Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. Talks in Geneva, Brussels and Vienna last week failed to ease any fears. Russia insisting for its demands to be taken seriously. The demands include sweeping security guarantees, including a permanent ban on Ukraine joining NATO. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that there will be no further negotiations until the West gives it proper answers. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister reaffirmed that Moscow has no intention of invading Ukraine, but said receiving Western security guarantees is imperative for Moscow. I do believe that uh, there is uh, no risk of a larger scale war uh, to start to unfold in Europe or elsewhere. Uh, we do not want and will not uh, take any action of aggressive character. We will not attack, strike, invade, quote unquote, whatever, Ukraine. However, Blinken says he will not present a formal response to the Russian proposals, saying that the two sides need to explore a common ground. Meanwhile, Macron told the European Parliament that the EU must work together on a new stability and security deal, one that they could then discuss with Russia. Macron says that Europeans need to rearm themselves, especially in the face of conflict on the continent's doorstep. On the other hand, another NATO member, Turkey, is trying to defuse the soaring tensions. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will visit Ukraine within a couple of weeks. Turkey had angered Moscow by supplying Kiev with combat drones. The Kremlin has rejected Erdogan's past offers of mediation because of the lingering tensions over the drones. With tens of thousands of Russian troops massed on the Ukrainian border, tensions between Moscow and the West have reached a post-Cold War high. Moscow insists it has no plans to invade, but is demanding wide-ranging security guarantees. This includes a ban on Ukraine ever joining NATO. For the U.S. and its NATO allies and other European allies, nothing less than a vast pullback of troops works. Now, for more on this, we are on correspondent. Susan Tehrani is joining us live from New York. Hello to you, Susan. Thank you for being with us. Now, the U.S. Secretary of State has said that he is not taking any written security proposal to Geneva when he meets 
with uh, his Russian counterpart Lavrov. NATO uh, Security General yesterday said that NATO will respond in writing. Where did things stand? Right, definitely, Alison. And you also mentioned those comments by uh, Macron of France. Uh, the main challenge right now lies in the fact of finding a united stance between the United States and its European allies when dealing uh, with Russia and perhaps Russia not enjoying, uh, at least rhetorically, this somewhat of a wedge between the two sides. Uh, while both sides are very adamant in preventing some kind of incursion on the part of Russia inside Ukraine. We have to take into consideration that Europe has some economic interests, notably uh, Germany. Uh, with its Nord Stream 2 pipeline uh, providing gas from Russia to Germany and then ultimately uh, Europe as well. And perhaps that's why uh, Anthony Blinken decided to go to Berlin uh, right after Ukraine. So that's one aspect of the situation. Another aspect is that we are now hearing that Anthony Blinken uh, and the U.S. administration hopes to impose sanctions on a group of Russian agents inside uh, of Ukraine and not directly uh, Russian oligarchs that we had previously known. Uh, the State Department has not commented on this, but this may signify that uh, the Biden administration hopes that perhaps by doing this and not directly uh, going after uh, Russian oligarchs inside Russia, there may be some kind of hope, uh, first of all, in bringing the Europeans closer uh, to finding common ground, and second of all, bringing Russia uh, to some sort of diplomatic settlement uh, as well. But yes, Yes, Anthony Blinken has made very clear that he's not going to put into writing um, any sort of agreement. That's something that Moscow really is looking forward to. It's hard to imagine whether or not Europe would put something into writing on its own without the United States as well, but we'll have to wait and see. Right, Susan, and we've been hearing a lot about sanctions. Do you think the U.S. and its allies have a plan in place, and will it be enough in terms of working against uh, Russia, which has experienced sanctions in the past. Yeah, yeah well, that's the million dollar question. And that's uh, something that the Russian foreign minister Lavrov has said time and again, that the United States is quote unquote addicted to sanctions. And as we're speaking right now, just a few hours earlier, uh, Russia had a meeting with uh, the Iranian, uh, President Putin had a meeting with the Iranian president, uh, Ibrahim Raisi, uh, sort of signifying uh, that it is sort of looking to uh, work with uh, other countries uh, in its export capacity and, and not just the West. But, you know, the, the question at the end of the day lies in what you just mentioned, whether or not the sanctions that the United States wants to pose or even uh, the political implications that it, it says that it wants to have, going as far as admitting that it wants to support some kind of uh, Ukrainian in insurgency to combat Russia in case of an incursion, would be enough to deter President Vladimir Putin if, if it does want to uh, stage this sort of quote-unquote imminent incursion uh, into Ukraine, as the State Department uh, says. But the fear right now is, what if the United States goes ahead with those sanctions? It does not affect Russia, and um, Russia goes ahead with that uh, invasion, and the invasion cannot be backtracked. Uh, then where, where does everyone stand? So that's that's one aspect to take into consideration, and that's something that even people in the Biden administration are concerned about as well. Right, Susan, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us with all the latest details. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.